Welcome to Nets of Hope. This is Cindy. Uh, just like I got, I told you guys, I would come back and I would give the word of the Lord that the Holy Spirit spoke and a short Bible study to go with it because it only makes sense if I do everything all together. So first, let's pray. And um, I'm going to ask the Lord to grant each one of you wisdom and knowledge um, because this is not meant to f let have anyone fear. Um, this is not meant to scare anyone. It's not. Especially if you're Christians. But there may be some of you that happen to click on this channel. And you're not quite a Christian yet. But you're still thinking about it. I mean, it's a possibility. Okay? So this is not meant to scare you. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus... Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, I come before your throne, Father, to reach out to the living Trinity of God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Father, I just ask that you would grant to us on this YouTube channel, The Nets of Hope, wisdom and knowledge and understanding as they listen to the videos that you help me to give to them each day, each week as we produce videos. I ask, O oh Lord, that your anointing would be upon me. And Holy Spirit, I give to you my conscious and subconscious mind that you would bring things to my remembrance of anything and everything that I forget or that you, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, want to add to um, the time of this video for the Lord. This is the Lord's hidden sanctuary. And Lord Jesus, this place belongs to you. So feel free Lord Jesus, to move upon me as you want to move upon me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Okay, so here's the word. On March the 25th, let me explain to you what happened. I was asleep, but I needed to get up and go use the bathroom. So I get up. It's about 3 a.m. I go to the bathroom, use the bathroom, and I come back. And I lay down in my bed and I cuddle up with my pillow. I like to cuddle up with my pillow. <laughs> and, um, and just lay on my right side and just get comfortable and try and go back to sleep because I wasn't supposed to get up till um, 5 in the morning. So I cuddle up. I get all situated and I'm still sleepy from just going to the bathroom for a few minutes. And I'm ready to go back to sleep when suddenly, as I close my eyes... I see a bright light, and then there's a crimson light standing in the bright light, but I'm not able to see everything clearly. I'm only able to see that there's a bright light with my eyes closed, and there's a crimson light. I can tell that someone is standing there, possibly in red. Um, and as they're standing there, this is what I heard, and I knew immediately it was the Holy Spirit because I know his voice. I've learned since I left my YouTube channel and had a time of rest for per the Lord and had a time of um, being refreshed, revived, and going through my own tribulations and trials and just maturing and growing and those kinds of things. I've learned how to distinctly detect, and the Lord helped me because I asked him to help me. I want to identify the Holy Spirit's voice versus the Lord's voice that I might know the two separately, that I would know very clearly when the Holy Spirit is speaking. So anyway, I knew it was the Holy Spirit speaking, and he started speaking at 3.05 a.m. because I reached and grabbed my cell phone as soon as I heard what I heard. Instantly, I wanted to know what time it was. And I was in awe because I wasn't expecting it. I hadn't been praying. I had been sleeping. But the Lord chose to do what he did to reveal it at 3.05 a.m. Now, I haven't looked up the number 3.05 yet. There could be more of a meaning with that. I, it's been crazy for me at work, working two different jobs, caring for my family. It's just been um, crazy. And then I'm having to deal with road construction over here in Magnolia to get to the new HEB store that I'm working at. So I'm having to take a deer detour. So I'm having to leave earlier in the morning and then in the evening, it's taking me longer to get home because of the construction. So anyway, bear with me. Okay, so this is what the Holy Spirit said, 3.05 a.m. He said it very sharply. 
very boldly and to the point. Earthquake, 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 just like that. Very sharply, very boldly, to the point. That's all he said, and then he took off. The light was gone, the crimson light, everything that was there that I was seeing, and, and, and then the Holy Spirit's voice was sealed. He, he didn't say anything else. Now then, um, I couldn't really go back to sleep. And so uh, I began to pray. And then I began to fall back asleep. And then I got back up around 5 a.m. And started praying some more. And um, I knew the Lord meant business by that. Now then I want to explain to you. I have learned that when the Lord speaks the same word or gives a dream or a vision of the same thing more than once, twice, or three times, it will happen. Also, the first time he speaks it is the word. The second time he speaks it is a confirmation that it is what he said the first time. The third time is that it will happen. Okay? So, as I began to pray and the Lord began to deal with my heart, day in and day out, I said, Lord, what's going on? I received two visions of my Bible of the corner page where it said Revelations, because I'd asked him, Lord, where would you like me to read? He didn't answer right away. It took a few days. And um, he gave me uh, two visions. And the first one was the corner page of Revelation. The second vision was a twin, meaning he meant for me to do it. And so I got on it, and I started reading. I always usually read a Bible study at night of three chapters a night, and then I call it quits. And I've learned, just so that you'll know, God's Word is the 11th harmonics. If you've never studied the 11th harmonics of sound on YouTube, I have. And uh, I was using it to try and get some sleep. Well, the Lord didn't like that, and neither did the Holy Spirit. And I had laid the phone on my belly one, one afternoon just listening to the 11th harmonics of tones. The Holy Spirit must have stuck his hand right out of my belly, and he shut the cell phone off. And I saw an instant vision of a sword with light. I had to call a prophet friend to give me some kind of understanding because it put the fear of God in me. And the Lord God told him that his word is the 11th harmonics. And if we read it out loud, it will help us to have good sleep before we go to bed. It's like melatonin. It's like looking at the sunshine and getting a large dose of melatonin. This is the sword of the word. It's brighter than the sun. Isn't that beautiful? So when you read the word and you think it's a demon making you go to sleep, that's not necessarily true because God's word's powerful. The key is, is not to overread it, but to meditate on a little bit at a time if you're not wanting to go to sleep. And making sure if you read it in the morning, you have your coffee first, okay? Have your coffee first that you'll have a caffeine charge. But if you're wanting to get sleep at night, I assure you, read it right before you go to bed and ask the Lord, pray and say, Lord, I want sweet, sweet sleep. And in Jesus' name, help me to sleep like a newborn baby. And I assure you, he will bless you and give you that. All right. So now with him saying earthquake, 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 and him giving me the visions two times of the corner page of the book of Revelations, I went there and I was obedient. I read three chapters one night and I got the second night, I got to the third, the, the, the other three chapters. When I got to the book of Revelations chapter six, got all the way down to the second seal, he moved in my spirit as I was reading the third seal. Now then, you and I all know that war broke out in Israel, and Israel is like the theme of everything that we're to, we're to like look towards Israel to understand where God's at in the Word, what's going on, and all that. So war broke out 
the day before the second eclipse. Now see, they're already in the time frame over there on, on um, I, th I don't remember the day of the second eclipse. But anyway, I think it was the 12th and 13 would be that Saturday before, no, excuse me. I think four, the 14th of October was the day of the eclipse. And so the number 13 would have been the day before on our calendar, but on Israel's calendar, it would have been going on the morning of, or the day of the 14th already, the day of the eclipse. Um, so anyway, war started over there and it hadn't ended yet. And I've prayed for it to end, but it's not God's will for it to end because we're in that time frame. So anyway, I'm going to read the second seal, which is what happened over there in Israel. And then I'm going to read the third seal. And then I'm going to go to the book of uh, Matthew 24. And I'm going to show you where he showed me where we're at in Matthew 24. So you have more of an understanding and you can learn and you can uh, be in sync with what the Lord is, is sharing with me. Uh, not that I'm perfect and right and everything, but I'm only giving you the details of what the Holy Spirit gave me. And then I'm going to tell you about some uh, some visions and uh, a short flash dream of being in uh, a great, great earthquake. And it shook even here in Texas. Okay. So the second seal says war. The second seal, war. When he broke the second seal, and the Lord Jesus is the one that breaks these seals according to the Father's timing to fulfill his word. And it says, I heard the second living creature saying come and another and a red horse went out and to him who went who sat on it it was granted to take peace from the earth and that men would slay one another which is a war and a great sword was given to him okay so now then when i got to this one right here is when the lord moved in me uh the third seal famine yeah famine says, when he broke the third seal, I heard the third living creature saying, Come. I looked and behold a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard something like a voice in the center of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil or the wine. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn to Matthew. Uh, 24, and I'm going to get ready to read you that, but I'm going to tell you, before I read that, um, let me tell you the visions. Okay, so, because otherwise it won't make sense. Oh, well, I need to turn one more page. Okay, on um, January the 14th, there you go, a double seven, seven and seven is 14. On January the 14th, um, the Lord gave me a vision and the vision was, um, of a woman standing on the corner and there was a street sign. I can't tell you if it was the street sign that named the street or if it was a stop sign. The only thing the Lord would allow me to see is the lower portion of it. And it was like someone took a piece of cardboard and wrote in bold black letters the word famine. I wasn't allowed to see the lady in her face. I was only allowed to see part of her, but I knew she was a woman because she had on um, a short outfit. Okay? And um, so when I saw the word famine, I knew God meant business. When I saw that it was the corner, it, it took a, a few days to like meditate and think on that vision and, and just pray about it. And it was revealed to me when I got to Revelation 6 and um, verse 7 there, right after the second seal is over with and the third seal begins about famine. Uh, it, it just moved in me mightily. That the vision he gave me means that famine is around the corner. That's why he gave the vision of the woman on the corner, the sign on the corner. And what he meant was, was that the 
third seal is around the corner to be opened. In other words, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Ghost is in the middle of breaking these seals for certain great shakenings to happen and events to come forth to start the birthing of his inheritance and revival and saving all these souls that are lost before the Antichrist rises so that he can save as many as he can without them being doomed. Okay, it's also his time that he wants to like revive the church. So now then, let me read Matthew 24 all the way down to um, verse 8. Because verse 8 has to do with the breaking of the water. And it has to do with a great earthquake. For all these things to come together to be like the earth is in labor. It's in labor to bring forth his true church. The great revival and the end times harvest the great white harvest that the Bible talks about, okay? Before the great tribulation, okay? So we're in tribulation now. We're not in great tribulation yet, okay? So signs of Christ's return, Matthew 24, verse 1. Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to point out the temple buildings to him. Verse 2. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another, which will not be torn down. Now that's over in, in uh, Israel. They're talking about the, uh, the temple. Okay? And then verse 3, it says, As he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the uh, and of the end of the age verse 4 and Jesus said and Jesus answered and said to him, them see to it that no one misleads you for many will come in my name saying i am the christ and will mislead many you will be hearing of wars. We've been hearing about that for a couple of years now since Ukraine, remember? Okay, you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. And I've had it on my YouTube channel. I've been talking about World War III. I've had too many dreams and visions of it. It's coming. And it's going to come to America, whether you and I like it or not. But he's going to shorten it. You just watch him. Because he wants his harvest. It's only to shake the non-Christian. Okay, so you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. Okay, now then listen to this verse. Here we go. For nation will rise against nation. What's happening to Israel right now? Nations are rising against Israel. That's what the Lord showed me. There's going to be nations that are going to rise up against America. Watch and see. It's going to happen. But also there's going to be this own nation, the evil ones within the nation. They're going to be doing some ungodly things that make you think otherwise. Okay, so for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places there will be famines. January the 14th was the vision of the famine on the corner with the woman okay so that's right at the beginning of this year so i think by him giving me that in january the 14th day i think he's saying this is that's gonna happen this year okay so but i don't know for sure i'm not god and i'm not a prophet uh for nation will rise against nation and again i want to stop everybody any of you that think I'm a prophet and you want to start rebuking me and say, oh, this hasn't happened, remember, God gives these messages. No one knows the time that they're going to actually happen. We're only given the message because God puts the fear of God in us and we need to do what God says to do when God says to do it. Now, he knows I haven't been able to come on this YouTube channel and get all this out, so I'm behind. So I've got to get it out so it'll get off my chest and then get ready for the next thing he wants to show me. Okay, guys? 
All right. So for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And in various places, there will be famines and earthquakes. There you go. Exactly what the Holy Spirit said. Now, here we go. Verse 8. And then I'm going to tell you a dream. Two dreams that he gave me. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. And then in verse 9, it says, Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will fall away and, be, and will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise and will mislead many. Because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will grow cold. But the one who endures... Staying close to the Lord, staying close to the brothers and sisters that are hot and prophetic will help you. To, but the one who endures to the end, he will be saved. Okay, do you follow me? This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Okay, and then it can go on and on, and that's where it starts talking about the Antichrist, and then how the false prophets are going to rise up into the wilderness areas, and then it talks about Jesus coming back, which is the rapture, his glorious return, if any of you are not familiar with the Bible. Like our new sister, Christy, I'm going to have faith. She's going to be our new Christian sister. Now then, let me share with you uh, the dream. The first dream that he gave me, was he put me on a road, and the road was a crossroad. Now, on the other side of me is the other end of the crossroad that I'm on, and it's a stretch of miles. I literally can see uh, at least two miles, I'm guessing, up the road, and it's full of cars, it's full of water coming from somewhere, and it's not coming in like a tsunami. So I don't believe it's a tsunami. Something has overflowed. That's what I'm thinking. And um, so as I'm standing on the other side of the road, I wasn't in a car. I was on foot. I was standing in the middle of the road. The road to my left and the road to my right, it didn't have any water on it yet. Only the road ahead of me had water on it. So what the Lord is saying right there is around the corner in the future ahead of all of us the breaking of the water which is the birth the birth of the kingdom of God on earth the beginning of revival the beginning of the great white harvest where there's going to be just revivals poured out everywhere millions and billions will get saved earthwide um, Lots of healings, anointings. The kingdom ranches will be built. We will be fully supplied. The Lord will give us an inheritance that we will be able to be fully supplied. There will be cities and, and, and places that will be destroyed. And he's got to get these kingdom ranches going, guys, so that you that live in the city will have a home. Now, some... Not all are meant to stay here during that time. I don't know who is meant to go and go on to heaven sooner and quicker, but many will be staying here to come to these kingdom ranches. I do know that. There is a, a young sweet girl on YouTube that the father gave a powerful word to about a time that we're looking for at the end of the moon season, right prior to a new moon. And uh, it's not going to be a good day. But anyway, her name is Hope Owens. She had a powerful word that she put out in the video. I can't remember the minutes of it. It was quite long. Just kind of guessing 50-something minutes, 40-something minutes. She was in a car, and she had short blonde hair at that time. And then... Now she, she's gotten longer hair, so uh, she must have fast-growing hair. Um, not sure, or that was an old video that he had her re-upload. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, she 
has been to heaven and he has showed her a lot of things. Uh, he has shown her the libraries of heaven and that everything that we say and do down here, there's books written from the time that we start speaking as a little child. Books are written. And uh, the things that we learn to say, the things we sing, the things we do, it's all written. She was able to see that. Um, anyway, um, uh, just powerful information in some of her videos that will help you to kind of have more of an understanding of uh, these things that are about to come forth. Okay, so in that dream, I saw the flooding water. The traffic was chaotic. Some were crisscrossing the road, like trying to avoid deeper uh, depths of water. And they were already stuck in it. They couldn't get out of it. They were trying to get to where I was. But the water was getting deeper and deeper and deeper from somewhere. It was coming from the, the left and the right. And it was just all filled up. But the thing, it was just strange. I, it was only on the road. I didn't see it out in the fields. But it was to the right and the left of just that road. The ditches and just that road. So that was like the Lord was clearly saying, this road is ahead of you guys. It's coming soon. And people were getting out of their car, kind of freaking out, because right where the road crossed, the water hadn't flowed into the cross of the road yet. And the road to the left and the road to the right was dry. The road that I was standing on, which was the same road that they were on that had water on it, it was dry. So it was like the Lord was showing me in my mind that these other roads are dry because you're looking into the future. This day that you're seeing hasn't come yet, but when it comes, the road that you're on ahead of you, it will begin to be filled up with the breaking of the water. Okay, so that's how I'm going to explain that. So anyway, I began to pray about the earthquake, the famines and everything. And one morning he woke me up and I do believe it was 3.32 a.m. And it was a quick flash dream because I wanted to know from him, is this earthquake going to affect my home right here? Because I needed to know to get my dishes down low, glass dishes, things like that. Um, I'm living in an old house. It's on a uh, concrete blocks, but I have to believe that my Lord won't allow this to affect me for too long, that he'll have angels hold my house up on the left and right and the front and back and not let it slide off the blocks. So I have to trust him. And if you're, you're, you're Christians, you're just going to have to trust him. If you're living in the danger zone of New Madrid, you're going to have to trust him. That he's got angels around you. He's got you. No one knows but God himself. And if he were to want to take your life, it's going to be suddenly. He, I don't believe he's going to allow you to suffer. It's going to, boom, you're going to be gone. You're going to be standing before him in heaven before you'll even know that you're gone. No, I wouldn't worry about any of that. If you go to heaven, you're better off. You're skipping all this craziness that's going on down here. You won't have to go through the Great Tribulation, which was the days of the Antichrist. Be thankful, okay? Don't be a complainer. And those that the Lord leaves behind, your family and friends, your children even, your husband, your wife, it's his will. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. So... Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Uh, that's pretty much all I have. Um, Holy Spirit, is there anything else that I have forgotten? Let me be silent for a minute. Is there anything else, Holy Spirit? I give you my conscious and subconscious mind moving me. The bird is singing secret, secret, secret. Nothing else, Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus. Amen.
Okay, I'm getting nothing to come to my mind. Anyway, I just want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for listening. Um, please feel free to comment uh, if you have had uh, things that the Lord has showed you uh, that everybody might have an opportunity to read them. And, um, you know, um, everybody be patient with me as I grow this channel back. I'm not going to have time to read all your comments. There's a lot of comments. Uh, right now, the Lord wants me to focus on making the videos because I'm behind. I'm, I'm behind because I had to, you know, they cut my hours back at HEB and Tomball. I can't survive on 14 hours a week, guys. I had to go fishing at other stores. So when you go fishing, that takes up time and gas. So I had to go do that, plus work the store in Tomball. And then when I finally got hours at another store and had to start going to work at that store as well as the store in Tomball, it's a lot of different traveling, going here and going there. And then there's road construction. I got to take detours. And then to come home and take care of my mom and my family. It's a lot of work. And then the work I do is not easy. And you may not think it, but I'm 61 years old going on to 62 years old. And here recently, I was stocking a big, huge truckload. And I was supposed to talk to a friend that day. And I just texted her. I just made it short, sweet, and simple. And I told her, I said, look, I'm real tired. And I said, I just want to rest. She got upset with me. But she didn't understand. I had pulled my the joint in my shoulder. I had tennis elbow and my my whole left hand. My hand was numb, it was tingling, it was throbbing, and I was just laying there resting and praying. But you know, sometimes guys, you have to be patient. I'm not God, and I'm not here to serve your every need, you know? And I know that we all need someone to talk to when we're going through hard times, but be patient. There's called another day, God willing. If there's another day, I could talk to you tomorrow. Be patient, be understanding. I'm almost 62 years old, guys, on July the 24th. I may not look it. God has really, really blessed me. He's blessed me. My family heritage, they don't start turning white hair and gray hair and all that until they're in their 70s and 80s. So I'm, I'm blessed. There's a lot of people that's had uh, old age hit them hard and quick. And it's mostly because they were smokers. And they started getting gray hairs and white hairs in late 50s and 60s. Well, I gave up that smoking so it wouldn't deteriorate me. And praise the Lord. He helped me to knock that out. Anyway, this is going to be the end of this video for now. Please like the video. Please comment as much as often. Even if it's emojis. The more there's comments or something and or likes, the video gets out there. Be patient with me. I'm working on the titles of these past few videos. Be patient. And uh, I'll be getting off at 1.30 the next two days. I'm hoping to be very productive after I get off and I rest for a little bit and then get back to getting the titles fixed on my YouTube channel. Right now, I'm going to go rest. I have been at it all day long between my family and making all these videos. And I have to go all the way into town to upload it because of the cell phone towers out here. I'm underneath the umbrella effect and it won't allow, allow me to upload these videos at my house. Isn't that terrible? So I have to go... Um, about four or five miles down the road at a gas station that has real good internet and I have to load it there. I love you. I gotta go. And Christy, I love you. I hope that you were able to listen to this video and call me soon. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Love you.